can see the stream. Woohoo! All right. Well, there we go. Look, quick save saving in some weird place. <laughs> This is why you don't let me rebuild a computer. Even though I don't think this is me. I refuse to accept responsibility for this one. Ah, but I have no chats. So are we actually connected to things? Um, we're certainly on Twitch. Check YouTube, yes. We're live on YouTube. Check. Interesting restream. Um, yeah, restream working. Yeah, not on my end. I wonder if my OBS is weird. That yeah, might be we might a. Have to install it, install it or something. Yeah, because it's causing me grief. I have a feeling. Yep. It seems to be the culprit. The culprit. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> All right. I don't know if everyone's still here, but let's go <laughs> talk about reflectivity. So as you can see, you have these, they're almost tubes, right? And the thing about the tubes is that they're all reflecting at the same angle. So you wind up with a very soft reflection that is incredibly um oh, need to turn on Thor the Thoth. So Everything's reflecting at the same angle. And I mean, that kind of makes sense because it's one light source, right? But you can see that all of the reflections are roughly the same thicknesses and they're all the same shape and form. So I would probably come in here and at least start to facet this just a touch you know maybe give it a transition I know this is really strong And now I'm making it pretty square to begin with, and then I soften things as opposed to starting soft. And kind of start to define these reflective forms, right? And what that does is it allows you to control shapes. So if you did want this to look like a tree, you know, you can come in and give it sort of a like a more broken reflective line here and once you get it crisp you can always come back and soften it and it'll still have the same reflective profiles um, <laughs> And now let's turn our gold back on. And you can see how this becomes a much more complicated reflective surface and it's more interesting to look at. I know in jewelry we over polish everything to be half round and smooth, but you're doing interesting sculptural stuff. Don't be afraid to do interesting sculptural stuff. But other than that, it looks a good. I like it. Any questions on that? Did we lose them? Uh, maybe. I think they were on YouTube, so probably. 
Is there anyone on YouTube? Are we not on YouTube? Yeah, we're on YouTube. We're back on YouTube. Okay. For those of you on YouTube, <laughs> if you like this chaos, push like. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> if you like watching grown men suffer, <laughs> subscribe for more. If you're sadistic and enjoy people about to pull their hair out. <laughs> Alrighty. Who's next? Uh, Faisal. Faisal. Boop. I bet that's you. That's you. Look at you go. Uh, Arnold has a question. Do I need to reduce the size of the tree prongs? Reduce the size? Well, I mean, height, maybe. You know, because once again, depending on where your stones are, where are stones? Oh, they were here somewhere. Uh, are these the... What's going on? That's not the Uh, weren't there are you hiding parts oh you know I probably am it was this one right here I think there they go <laughs> um, once again I would say that if you want them this high move your settings up but if you're because during a setting none of these will be this high afterwards right these are all going to be These are all going to mm, move. Rock, big. Back face masking's on. That's why it's acting weird. You know, these are going to be this tall. Does that make sense? You know, after the setting, they're going to be, you know, much more flush with the stones so yeah i would you know i would like i said for production i would probably keep my prong just above the table of the stone you know like a mill if that above the table of the stone because they're going to take a setting burr they're going to chop that off or snip it off and they're going to take a setting burr and kind of rub it down so you don't need that much metal. They're going to just cut it off. So I would make those a little smaller, yes. Because that will give you a more legitimate idea of what the part will actually wind up looking like. Ja? Oh, yeah. Ja? Ja, ja? Aye. Any other questions? Oh, uh, would it work without that big center cylinder underneath the gems? You mean this, the seat? Um, they can, if your prongs are much bigger. I would say, especially early on in the design process, that I would leave the seat only because unless you know a lot about your prong thicknesses and stuff you can get yourself into a lot of trouble quickly so i would leave the seat yeah it doesn't need to be quite so no that's a robust seat but yeah so donutty yeah once again this comes back down to the concept of um things being round right you have all these why that looks a little odd, I would argue, more than it 
it being big is that it is um, round where these are square and I think that here yeah, let's do this and let us are you using dynamic geometry I bet you are you look see this doesn't even have any of those settings in there <laughs> wrong UI um, there is dynamic yeah so that's your first problem <laughs> Oops. Oh, boom. and so now you can see that that actually reads better because it's sharper and it ties in with the prongs and these being sort of tied to the sharp angles of the bird in some way it's almost like this is the bird's tail um, keeping this stuff sharp makes a little bit more sense because it'll separate yeah, it'll separate it from the half round. Um, but yeah, you know, you can also... kind of flatten it a touch. And you can bring it up so it's not quite filling out that space so much <clears throat> just so you know you can also bring all of that stuff back towards the body of the ring if you don't want it standing out that far um right because this setting can actually be you know a little bit more tied in with the eagle per se let's say there and then these can be not, you, you just have a lot of airspace in all these settings. I think that um, all this could be a drag down into the ring a bit more. And then these guys. That's interesting. The prongs are... Oh, because they're tied to the trees. Okay. But you can see you can bring all that down. And it'll sit closer to the finger. And that'll make it a little safer. It won't get beat up so bad. Does that make sense? Insert multi-mesh tool. Any questions? That seems pretty good. And if you do have any further questions, especially ones that are jewelry specific, uh, feel free to join our Discord if you're not in there already. Ask away. Yeah, we have a very informative group of people. Yep. All right. Are we ready to move on? Where did he have? Please. Any skill progress you want during the contest except insert mesh brushes. So basically, what that means is you're not allowed to have a ton of pre sculpted stuff where you can just bring it in and drop it in, um, is why that comp that's a competition rule. So if you came in here and, like, if I, I think, yeah, here's the tune. Um, so see, these are all pre sculpted parts. And so feasibly, you could come in, drag this in, you know, you have that guy, and then you go, okay, I want, uh, I know they have heads and stuff in here. So come that's, oh, that's the wrong one, that's why. Um, you know, you can have feet, and you're like, oh, I want feet on it. Right, so what they're, they don't want you doing all of the sculpting before you get 
into the competition and then just drag out the completed parts right because i mean here you can see that these have different noses and different mouths and so feasibly you could just drag out a part so that's why they don't want you using insert multi-mesh brushes i would assume I think penguins are panda chickens. I think that's my my vote. <laughs> okay. I still think that you're you're sort of inverting the concept of these um, striking plates because here again you have the thinnest edge at the highest which means all these little linear details are going to disappear with two stamps on the thing so you got to remember what this is for and this is to create and that's why I call them striking plate no, of course I forget we have the lower and higher res um, right you can see that how easily that's just gonna get knocked down to so I would have these be positive And don't have ridges on them. If you like this shape and feeling. And then here's where you can cut grooves in. Because you want this to be separated out. And the nice thing about doing it this way. Is that as that flattens out. Right. Let's just take trim front real quick. And let's knock a ton of this off. You can see it's still the basic design that they bought, right? Where if you put all the design on that lip and the ridges are raised, one good boop at a bar on a cement countertop, and that's gone. And that's why I call these striking plates. So under normal circumstances, how I build these is that this is lower. The center is higher. And what that allows you to do <clears throat> is you can have this up here and then you can do whatever you want back down here and you can get a schmancy and a zornate and you know linear detail and stuff because this is what's going to hit first right These edges are probably going to take a little bit of a beating. Right, because they're pretty proud. And yet again, that's sort of the, the point of this. Being high. Is that these being below it, even at angles, these are going to start to protect this stuff. So just remember what the striking plate's for. And that is to protect the detail. Excuse me. Okay. I would say you have a distinct layer change here. Um, don't be afraid to accent it just so because that's going under you can sort of explain what it's doing going under oh my god I got the yawns all of a sudden <clears throat> I think 
the yawns are just a psychological defense of me knowing that OBS is going to be horrible to me all night. Come on now, you fix it. <laughs> you did nothing to fix it, but I'm confident you fixed it. Awesome. That's what I like. Blind faith. <laughs> There's no scientific evidence for that, but I appreciate <laughs> it. I was going to say, if these are going to be... Why am I yawning all of a sudden? If um, these are going to be prongs, you are definitely going to need more meat. A little bit more meat there for prawns. And I would say that you definitely need this to be thicker. Because you don't have anything where the ring is sitting on the finger here. You just have this blade. And this will become insanely uncomfortable to wear. Very quickly. What has happened here? Hmm. So you want at least a little meat there. So it doesn't just gouge into the finger. Yeah? That's it, you're probably even gonna need more than that. Right where that's a little bit more flush there, so you have some place for the ring to sit. Oh my gosh, stop it. Henry, stop yawning. My bad. I know you're making me do that. It's like not even late yet, no yawning. Let's see, smooth up your surfaces. Weird little dents, just our weird reflection stories, so. Hmm. Okay. And yet again, this is just a personal thing, but I find that um, it helps quite a bit. I, oops, is that trim? No, that's trim front. Trim dynamic. I would knock this lip off because the sharper those edges are, the, the less pleasant it is to wear. I mean, all in all, the form's looking good. You spent a little bit more time sort of organizing this out. Here again, though, don't be afraid to take these corners, right? Because everything sort of stops at the edge. Have some of this stuff, you know, come down and around. I mean, unless there's a reason you have to make it sort of like just a surface thing. Which is perfectly legitimate, and you can ignore what I'm saying.
Yeah. You know where some of that stuff carries over and around. Don't let your ring just stop at the edge. Yeah. Yep. Looking good. Alrighty. Who's next? Dakota. Which one's that? Uh, demonic Goblet. Bum, bum, bum. Our buddy Baphomet. Um... I like using the texture, you know, to separate the drop backs and stuff. Um, Baphomet needs some nostrils. He's got two little bally, cheeky things and no nostrils. Or are those his nostrils? Baphomet needs a nose. I think he needs a hole at the end of the ball things. Yeah, but goats have noses. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Give him a really nice nose. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not making fun of Batman. <laughs> I apologize. Um... guy he has a mitten nose that's making fun of me not you by the way sorry Give Beth Med knows. Um, and because this is so crisp and clean, the fact that this got very soft um, and it just ends, I would probably have these things interact more with the surface. Now, here. Now, do we remember what this was? Is it control? No. Control all. No. Oh. Did that stick to it? Yeah, it did. There it is. That's such a great feature. So if you're uh, snake hooking and you hold down Alt, do you see how it's snapping to um, that? Snapping to the base of the ring? That's sexy. Does this have subdivision levels? No. So we're going to even improve this process by turning on Sculptures Pro. Hold on. Oh. Oops. This one's been decimated. Yeah, that's why I'm doing Sculptures Pro. It doesn't mind. <laughs> Ooh, what just happened there? Oh, I see. So I would have that interact a little bit more. And I would actually probably bring... If it's this interaction between this very clean surface and this very organic surface, 
I would probably do something that maybe has a ridge on it where these have scoops right where the architecture is going down and into the organic just so it doesn't look like you have one shape and you just plopped another shape on it I would have um, probably oh, everybody stop there we go you know where you have something that's doing that and this gives the organics a place to interact and these come in so you have this transition between the hard surface and the organic surface as opposed to cup and tree <clears throat> and I would definitely crisp up your um, your base right uh, and that's not hard just come in with clay tubes and kind of get edges sorted in because one it'll reflect better two it'll look like it has a little bit more intention um, and get a little where's crumple give me some crumple Am I just blind? There it is. Turn Sculptures Pro off before you try Crumple. And you can mask. Like mask the area off. Come in with crumple. And it'll give you a little bit more texture to start with. And you can see that separates the back of that from your viney, limmy things. And this also gives you a good place to come in and start to um, do a little sculpting and get this sharper I know you're decimated so you don't have the geo to do it she got some really skinny arms um, and you'd probably see her hands on top if you're judging the arm length is crumple a default brush yes crumple is a default brush and when you're doing limbs like going around things um you know a limb isn't something that is going to um it's not going to form around the body quite the same <laughs> no one saw that um it's going to still be a limb right so think of it right it's not going to just be a brush stroke it's going to kind of come up and around or something right it's it's not going to look just like um, a hump where's clay build up I guess I can do it that way you know have it have some depth because it's not just going to be this thing that wraps around her especially with the stuff being so big and then all of a sudden it's you know just this little thing her arms are definitely going to be bigger and you might want to consider bringing like maybe one in front one in back and then have bindings or something but don't just hide her hands because it makes it seem like you're scared of making hands and you're worried about making mittens. <laughs> Once again, 
that's a joke about me, not you. Um, you know, just get her arms a little thicker and tied in. If she's going to be in the tree, make sure that um, I guess she might actually. You know, her legs. You know, her knees are in there. Lower leg. So she's out here. Her legs disappear. Make sure that, planularly speaking, let's take planar and run it off the surface and you can see the front of her leg on the plane would be out here somewhere so you'd not um, right you can see that if we're following the plane of the surface of the leg you have her legs cut off here so just make sure that if you have her going behind something that this plane you know her feet would be down here and we'd be able to see him as far as this went. I mean, I guess she could be on her knees. Um, but I think in some ways it's just as simple to just make sure this stuff is out far enough that you're not looking for her feet, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think pulling the stuff forward is the solution they would be looking for because she's supposed to be fusing into the tree. Yeah. That was my guess as well. So, definitely make it to where that's up and out instead of someplace where her her legs could be. And because this detail is so deep, I would probably make these a touch deeper. I mean, you have plenty of depth in there. Um, because this is sculptural, maybe you um is this decimated yeah okay but maybe you do something where you have um let's do clay build up it'll be ooh, let's turn clay build up down dramatically <laughs> and why i don't use clay build up where these have just a little bit more depth information, right? Where you might have like a, an angle carve there. So it has some visual depth because you have this really complicated sculpture and then all of a sudden this stuff just becomes super flat, but you have this lovely complicated sculpture. I would just say, figure out a way to make these a little bit more sculptural so they don't look like you just use Boolean and cut them in. You know, make them look like there's something there. And then I would probably push that ropey pattern going around the top. Once again, just as something sculptural instead of something flat. You know, doing... something that is a little bit more concretely sculptural. Or dimensional, you know, where it's not just for that. Now, I guess you do have to be careful with that in some ways, because if these are too deep, when you're drinking the sacrificial virgin's blood out, you might dribble blood on your chin, and that could create all kinds of issues. But, um... I would... You know, just make sure that... Uh -oh. See, you make fun of it, and you get... crashed. <laughs> um... Oh, did it crash? No, it might be saving, I don't know. When it comes back, can you explain uh, radio symmetry? Oh, sure. 
so under symmetry see this little r that means radial and it takes the axis that you're on and it spins around it so i chose 49 because i know that that's a fairly good size it'll give me air space in between my bits and so radio what is up with that it's only four million polys there's something weird i turned on here somehow okay let's try this again yeah wow look at that hmm. i wonder what that's about i have something weird turned on because we just used radial symmetry fine a couple seconds ago and you can't tell me i don't have enough ram to do this <laughs> um so see the red dots um so what it's allowing me to do is it's on the y-axis so it's going up and down and then i am radially changing here let's kick this up so you can actually see it right and it allows me to sculpt around an axis and so this is 49 if i had made that 50 we could come back in here and make it 25 and now I would be doing every other one. So if you had something that matches a pattern, you know, it allows you to come in. And of course, 25 does not go into 49 uh, evenly, but that's okay. <laughs> Makes sense? And you just, this is the number, right? If you have two, it becomes bypass geometry. So you're just doing something opposite, right? Mm -hmm. And you see how it's doing the opposite over here. So radio symmetry is really helpful if you're doing round things. It's very cool. Did that answer that? Yep. Give poor Baphomet a nose. He doesn't want to suffocate. Alrighty. If there are no questions, who's next? Up next, we have Kristoff. What's his piece? Look at that. Noxedith. Noxedith 3D. I don't think that is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Did I not download it yet? Uh, I I would have assumed you download. I don't see it. Did you go through all the ones you have loaded? I think so. Let's look. Yeah. Then then you didn't download it yet. <laughs> I knew that. Ah, the power of reasoning. We are awesome. <laughs> What's the name? Uh, Kristoff. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five more models to have. Woohoo! Alrighty. Let's go to Dropbox. What does it do? One, a two, a three, a four, a five. Big guy course model. <laughs> okay, that says it's going to take a couple minutes. Let me uh, run to the restroom real quick. I will be right back. Uh -huh. over here. Uh, for everyone who can hear me on YouTube, uh, Tomas is completely unable to see your messages. Uh, I think most of you have gathered that by now. 
Um, so if anybody has questions that I can't answer or he could answer better, I will read them off to him. But hi, I'm Henry Williams, the person you see typing to you on both Twitch and YouTube. If you need links in YouTube, I have no solution. YouTube won't let us post links. Yeah, his UI is nuts, isn't it, Iron Man? It's a, he hates going into the menus, like, you know, pressing document, going to this and that. So he just pulls every button he ever uses out to the main screen. Um, I really like it because it stops me from having to learn all the different menus. And if you want his UI, you can go to zbrushjewelryworkshop.com and just sign up to the mailing list and uh, you'll get an email with a link to download it, all of his custom brushes, um, and a free video on scale. Like real world scale for making 3D prints and stuff. Yeah, what he said. Yeah. Mm -mm. I got a big old file in this one, don't I? Three gigs. <laughs> yep. The next one is the three gig one. Mm. <laughs> Better have some subdivisions in it. You can do it. <clears throat> Where's all the geometry? 150 mil. It's somewhere. Hmm. All right. So who's first? Stuff. The big one. The big one. All right. So where is all your geometry? Let's see. Because it's not in the clothes.
every the uh, everything does have subdivisions. But but these all seem to be really low res, aren't they? I mean, like these Sub are all subdividing with smoothing off. Oh, there's still higher res here. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's still my one point nine three. Hmm. It's okay. I can't. I have single subdivisions that are <laughs> hundred million poly, so I'm not allowed to comment. <laughs> All right. Is there anything super hidden here? Let's turn everybody off and look at this. Oh, it's a shell. Well, that's why there's twice as much geometry here as... Is it actually a thickened shell? Or is it... Am I just seeing both sides here? No, it's just double. Okay. So, you have twice as much geometry. So, this is really like a 7 million poly surface. Yeah? I... I mean, there's no, geometry no, on the inside. Or is this just yeah. a shell? It's just double faces. Oh, okay. There's no geometry on the face. It's oh, okay, okay, okay. So this is just... It's a 15 million poly torso. That's fine. The oh, legs are hidden. Because oh. I'm going to delete them later. Okay. You're going to delete them? <laughs> you like don't like those legs. They are hidden by the yeah, hands yeah. and things anyway. Well, that explains at least 25 mil of that. All right, so let's see what we got here. Base anatomy is solid. So let's see. Your details nice. So the only thing I would say about your um, the the lip or the edge is that you've used a um, a V shaped tool, you know. So you're getting this V cut. Um, and I just find that these are just steps just become much more compelling if they're flatter. So instead of it having a V where it is a transition, like a shelf transition, um, what is that set? My settings are all squirrely. Instead of it being a V, it's a flat surface. And then that's a step, right? And these just read much cleaner at the end of the day. You see where your transition edge is, right? And you get a cleaner reflection story, if that makes sense. Instead of having this being a bright edge and then this being um, a different... Here, let's turn on the talent. See, by using the V tool, you wind up with this double reflection going on. Because you have a, a V, right? So you have this plane, you have this dark, and then this is reflective and this is dark. Where well, you can see by just simply flattening out the back side of that V, you wind up with an actual surface transition. And here, let's look at it here. And see how that now reads like a step transition instead of a trench. And I just think those read cleaner from larger distances away. You see here how now 
this becomes a clean line this is clean that's a clean line but here you have this bright line and then a dark line and the bright line it just makes the surfaces more complicated to be able to tell what's going on so I would uh, think about these transitions a little differently Woo. my space mouse is fast <laughs> And the other thing the V's do is it makes it look like it's denting into the head as opposed to being a transition. And um, you know, I just find that um, the flat transitions just read a little bit better from a little bit more distance. And you really have layers that are layered. They make sense and they're in place. Even here, you can see that. What is going on? Is there anything behind this? Hmm. That's weird. Sometimes geometry just wants to be squirrely. Something funny with those plain faces. The normals are squirrely right here in this corner. Sometimes it just decides. It's bizarre. Well, I think you get what I'm saying. I just think that they read, they come across cleaner. So I would at least consider that. Um, you know, the face is nice. Your forms are nice. Like I said, your anatomy is solid. Mm. Once again, with characters, it's a little tricky. And I don't once again i don't you know with these being as low res as they are it's hard to say where you are in your development i mean as far as the model goes they all have higher subdivisions levels that's everything where the 150 mil is okay so she has a ton of sp <clears throat> a ton of space between her legs like you could drive a truck through there. Um, are these supposed to be... Well, you have wrinkles in the back. Um, often, instead, of, if these aren't like leggings, you know, or really tight, super tight pants, normally, instead of your wrinkles going this way... Oh, play too... Instead of your wrinkles going this way... Your wrinkles are going to be pulling into the leg, sort of like that. Um, how does my clay tubes keep getting so blasted out? Um, so you sort of have the transition from the leg to the groin, and then the fabric coming over the transition from the leg to the groin, and then maybe up. But you very rarely, in pants that aren't, like I said, skin tight, 
do you have um, the crotch scene going this way? And that also gives you this sort of scoop here where, you know, in the anatomy, you have something that's much more, you know, you have the crotch, but then your legs do this for the most part. Very rarely do you see this shape. I mean, there are people who are seriously anorexic who don't have that muscle mass that you get that. But this really reads as um, anorexic or unnatural. Now, that being said, it's a stylized character, so you might be, that's what I'm looking for, and so ignore me. But you can see that you have this weight here, and it almost looks like um, a buttocks, right? In the sense of the weights coming out and over. But this is very deep. So I think that thinking about changing this silhouette to something that's a little bit more... Yeah. Something a little more in that vein. Let me see if we can look at pants. see how you're getting the cross even here you're not getting it going with the crotch line you're getting it crossed out but do you see what I mean? The tension of the pant is going across the leg as opposed to up with the groin. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Even on something that's pretty tight, you can see it doesn't actually, because how a crotch is cut, right? Um, it's usually a nice clean, um, nice clean shape. So it doesn't drop back. It, it, Instead of following, up oh, here, see the, the seam here? See how the seam is? It's not really trying to um, follow the body. It gives, normally your, your crotch seam does this, where your crotch is doing that. And you don't usually bind up the groin um, when you're cutting a pattern. See, even here where these are pretty tight because these are flex pants, right? So these are tight. But see how the crotch, you don't have that gap. You don't have a square top, right? And the tension of the pant is coming from the groin out across the leg. So I think that this is a little bit more reminiscent of what a butt does, right? If that makes any sense. Now, like I said, if they were like yoga pants or something, a yoga pant is like a tight, so it is going to follow the body. But I think these have a little bit more, um, um, you know what I mean, where this is a flatter yeah. front. And then that flat front is the tension that gives you that. And then these aren't quite so gappy. Oops. I think you kind of understand what I mean. <laughs> I still think this is a little puffy. Um, I think you can see what I mean by the silhouette here. How you get lumpy here. Um, because the leg would be, you know, you're not wrong that it kind of puffs there, but you get flat right here. And I think that's what's giving that, that look right here. Because this is sort of inset. Move infinite X.
And then, you know, the flat dot drawing. I think that'll help that. Here again, with the, um, with the, uh, you know, this is stitched on top of the pant so you're not really going to get this V there that's going to be on a little flatter and that way it's actually sitting on top of that sells it as sitting on top a little bit more than cutting back and in. Weight's nice on those. I like the texture here again though. that little lip you, know, you might have some weight rolling over there but it wouldn't be all the way right Yeah, so what I would suggest, because um, I see the, how I see you putting detail into things. Here, let's just go to the boot and hide everybody else real quick. And tell me if I'm wrong about this. Let me duplicate these. Lower the res. Let me just smooth this out. So when you start conceiving like your linear breaks and how you're doing your thing, do you grab, I mean, yeah, it's probably not slash. Let's do word cracks and make our brush a little smaller. Do you come in and like draw the lines in? Depends a bit on the detail, but Generally, I draw the line in, then I go over clay build up on one side. Sure. Then so, build up, build down on the other side, but for those, I probably. Yeah. Do. Well, I just see a lot of your V's coming in. And instead of using clay build up, try using clay tubes because clay tubes doesn't have the build up. And instead of drawing lines, right, use clay tubes. It just experiment with this once or twice and I think it'll I think it'll help and um, 
if you're using clay tubes, just use that outside edge, right? Because it's a sharp edge brush. Mm -hmm. And instead of cutting things in, just do one side higher than the other. Right? And I tend to lower and smooth, you know. There it is, there it is, there it is. And then you got this, so let's, instead of drawing the line on, I'm going to create the layer of it. And now I'm going to cut that back and make that a little more dramatic. But you can see that I'm not drawing lines. And coming in and using the edge of clay tubes and building up your forms and then knocking back your forms and not actually cutting lines in but defining them as layers and even when you're doing something that's a seam bring that one in come back to the next side do that one in and so before you cut a line in um, I use clay fill most of the time to back my edges. Lower res. Smooth it out. And just experiment with this just a touch. And I think you're going to be happier with the results than just cutting them in. Because when you start sculpting your layers in, if you're thinking about using the clay tube's edge to define your layers and steps, you're actually creating layers and steps from the initial conception. And that allows you to really understand your form as far as um, like how you're putting it together, I guess. And it just winds up with much clearer level separation and in turn detail um, because they are actually reflecting not as the same surface but as two different planes and what I mean by that let's go to gold so let's just come in here and let's say we're going to do a little step there so if you come in and it's just going to be an extension of this and we come in and we draw our line and now that's going to be like a layered step right if this is how we're thinking about it the problem is is this is still reflecting as one surface right no matter what you do it's it's always reflecting as one surface where if you come in and you start thinking about your surfaces with clay tubes edge as you're laying it in here, I can't see anything with that um, as I'm laying it in and then filling it in and then I usually come back in and knock this back so it's slightly flatter because slightly flatter surfaces reflect more powerfully or they reflect more cohesively, I guess. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Right, so I haven't cut anything in at all. And I've done this. Let's turn our gold back on. Come on. And now you can see that this is a surface that's facing a different direction than this surface. So this will not reflect as that. Does that make sense? And yeah. so from the very base conception, if you're doing it with the edge of clay tubes instead of drawing a line on, it allows you to actually even just subconsciously conceive these things as dimensional objects that have foregrounds, midgrounds, and backgrounds, as opposed to a flat object 
that we're just going to draw lines into and you can see the reflection story doesn't change where this even though it's flat and kind of you can see that it's not just one thing you get this disrupted surface so i think i'd love to see you kind of play with that a little and just to, to help you conceive the dimensionality of these objects because i mean your forms are great you know i mean your sculpting's good um it's just i just see a ton of this being and the problem with the v is this reflection right here this one right here because that becomes this bright surface or a dark surface and that robs from the idea of something sitting on something else it becomes something that's dug into something else and it's just it's consistent i see it here quite a bit and not that that's horrible or anything it's just um you just wind up with oh, let's look at your back And see, as you can see this, you actually dimensionally did this, right? Because you actually created the objects. And so you didn't get to the point where you could draw in the detail. Um, I understand the ridge around the rivets, but even on these rivets, right? I would probably have, um, instead of just making it a full round recess, um, coming in and kind of breaking that edge up. And then it looks like the rivet is sitting on top and it's not just a ring around it. You're breaking that reflective surface up so it looks like something's been in there. The tools moved around. And those little subtleties really help. But like, because of how you conceive this, you can see that by making the layers, you're retaining the layers. Where on the pants, when you did the knee, which is still a surface sitting on top because it's not top stitched, so you don't have it flush, what happens is it's stitched inside out and then they fold that up so that seam is coming up and out off the surface so instead of your pocket starting you know where you go okay I want it here and then you're like okay well I'm gonna take you know this uh, and I'm gonna take that back but you're still winding up with that V shape you can see instead of drawing it, if I come in here and I do this, and I come in here and do it again, and then just hit one a couple times, boop, 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 boop. Now I have thickness along the same stroke. Do that. And now you have something that's sitting on the surface. So play with that a little. I think it'll help. Um, because, I mean, your forms, your shape, I mean, you're, you're producing beautiful stuff. I just see a lot of that drawing on the surface and I think if you can separate that out it's going to take that up just another notch where a lot of these transitions become cleaner but it looks great thank you yeah no it looks good very nice thanks for sharing thanks for tips yeah um before you move on to the next model, we have a question. Uh, can you tell us how to transition clothes from Marvelous Designer into ZBrush? Um, and I know you don't actually have any Marvelous models, but I think next Well, in a lot of ways, it's sort of similar to what he has here. Um, they come in as shells. So it's just, right, like, uh, here, come on, and everybody else. So for Marvelous, you're getting a model like this. I'm going to turn off double. So you're getting a, a shell. 
right, that has no double side. So the first thing you probably want to do, well, you can futz with it like this for a while, right? And why or where people have issues is they then try to use that as functioning geometry and it doesn't function well, right? Like you can't print it. It's just one thing. So oop, my buttons aren't there. Hmm. I wonder where they are. They are in dynamic subdivision. So when you start to here, we're going to lower this res just so we don't choke out the delete higher, delete lower. So you've come in and you've done your work on it, but you have the shell. So what you have to do is you have to turn it into viable dimensional geometry to be able to use it for most. I mean, if you're just doing um, rendering and stuff, then you don't have to worry about it. It's a beautiful armpit, actually. Two thumbs up. So many people muff armpits. <laughs> it's like, it looks good. Um, so the number one thing that I see people blowing it with the Marvelous Designer stuff is they never convert it into usable geometry. And so, and when I say usable, I'm talking about being able to print it, being able to actually use it, right? So you have a shell, you have to turn on dynamics and see right here, thickness, just increase the thickness a little. You don't need a whole lot. And why isn't it applying? Subdivision Z. Thickness, a new one, thickness. Why is it not thickness? Okay, this is going to be my day, isn't it? I've got a hidden part. I've got a hidden next. You should delete hidden. You can. You have it in what? What do you have to? I've got. Let the the legs are hidden. Oh 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 oh! Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, why is that not working? Because it's not there. Okay, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm missing something here. What am I not doing? Um, so within dynamic, if you um, just increase the thickness a little, if you don't want tons of thickness, there it is. Um, of course, you can always give it as much thickness as you want. The thing to remember about dynamic subdivision and thickening is that it doesn't go in one direction it goes in both directions it goes from the middle and puffs out so if you have a lot of detail see how her nose and her eyelids are puffy now the thing you need to remember if let's say you were doing this and you want it feasible geometry because you're going to turn this into a toy a doll or something like that let's undo that is we a duplicate it and then we do our thickness let's look at the face here for a second I want a little distortion in the face thickness too much so you can see we've just we definitely puffed up her details so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and just real quick smooth some of this back and down turn the symmetry on smooth this out and then we're going to bring so this should be broken into different subdivisions it is no, it isn't, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, good. Mask. 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 Okay. And now her inside should still be active. Where is that? Why 
Okay, that is the outside. All right, we'll just deal with this um, because as you can see, you can't see the inside. So that means that I only have the outside shell. You turn this back on and we go project all and you re-project the outside shell back to your original shell and that can prevent it greatly from um, uh, the distortion. So now we turn that off and you can see that we don't have the distortion anymore, right? Does that make sense? To everyone. That's to me. Did that answer the question about um, Marvelous? Because, I mean, you just bring it, isn't it, a, is it an STL? What does it come in as? It's either an STL or an OBJ you export, you import it in, but those only have one side. They don't have depth to them. So that's the number one issue with that. Cool. Cool. Until Ian responds, I will assume that that answers that question. Right on, right on. Um, and up next is Ian. It might be a different one. <laughs> and what's he have? This one. This one is... Uh, it just says Ian Arnold for critique. So, no idea. That I one. Think that, yeah, I think that's it. Alrighty. This is, uh -oh. no. <sighs> Am I still streaming? Did that kill us? Wah, wah. No, you're still streaming. I've been getting a lot more of these locked out memory list ID things. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, we definitely need to fix your XMP profile. Did your new RAM kit come in? No, he said he was going to send it today. Even though I didn't get shipping info. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. It's like supremacist architecture. You go, Daddy. Yeah, you don't say. We have normally crash. And look. It's quick saving someplace else. I have no idea where it's quick saving to. <laughs> My God. Oh no, we lost all the. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I quit. <laughs> I just don't even know what to say. Um, all right. It's funny. From here, he looks very much like Arnold. Yes. So, uh, Arnold is not finished. No detailing now. Um, all I worry about is the anatomy and likeness. Well, I identified it as Arnold without knowing that. I sculpted a lot of Arnold. On Jingle All the Way, we were doing toys. And um, we sculpted a lot of Arnold. What's really funny about this, okay? And everyone's going to say, no, no, no. But the actual picture of Arnold in his heyday, like when he was you know, like, what was it? 20 and, you know, Mr. Universe is that his pecs like, seriously we measured them. It was ridiculous. And he actually had a when he came in, like we had a body cast of him and stuff. And it is incredible the, I wonder if I can find it. His pec separation was literally uh, uh, 
infinite x. His pecs in his, like, Mr. Universe days are literally, like, out. So far, it's almost like a full head length forward. It, he has the most ridiculous torso in the universe. Um, and we had to ask if it was, like, a weird thing from the... From... Uh, let's do Arnold... If you look, and I know this is at an angle, and I'm going to try to find the picture, but if you look at the front of his head to the front of his pecs, it is almost a head length. I mean, when we were doing all the measurements and stuff. Now that's, it's funny, that's a earlier one. Oh no, stop. It's crazy. Just his peck dimensions are absurd. He had the most ridiculous body ever. He was a beast. It's amazing. Look at that. Good God. And you put that on a, what is it, six foot four frame? Holy Hannah. Um, all right. Well, you're definitely getting there with the likeness, because from here, it looks like him. It's really hard to get things to look like him from face on without color. Once you paint it, you're like, oh, it looks like him. But otherwise, it, yeah, I sculpted this body so many times, it's maddening. Um, your anatomy's looking good. There's just... Um, once again, this comes back sort of to that cutting things in versus the layers. As you can see here, you get this shelf right there. That shelf isn't quite so... Um, it It's still coming from under, and it's not a scoop, if that makes any sense. Uh, let's see. Do we, I'm going to divide this up so it can brush just a little bit smoother here. Mm -hmm. these are weighted it's not a um, so I guess what I'm saying is that this intersection that comes in it doesn't scoop out it's another set of muscles so by scooping it there it makes it dramatic but it makes it anemic I guess you know it looks then and so that is a row and then that intersects with it does that make sense um let's go back to photos here mm, i did it again didn't i that's the set a good set of pictures but he wasn't show pumped for that here do you see this is actually muscle so you're never going to get that scoop it's never just right it is a uh, and then that is a uh, it doesn't come this way and that's on most of these muscle intersections that's the thing to remember is that it's not um, right they're not shelves they're very distinct muscle lumps coming together and so I think that here your lat but these are um, Instead of this being a scoop out, see how that's a definitive line, your profile's right. But I would probably say that these actually are out a little more. Right, 
this isn't so much a deep scoop there it's bulk and yet again it's not um, a scoop here it's two rounds intersecting if that makes any sense mm -mm. I think he probably is a little bit more a little more bubbly in the hips yeah you can see his god what's the name of that muscle I can never remember but this is a very good lump it's a shame I had some amazing so they gave us um a bunch of his um process photos that his coach or trainer took so we had really clear front side three-quarter profiles because they were trying to match their silhouettes so we had some really really great images that came from their training stuff Pinterest is the devil. You make me go through all that and I can't even. Very sad. And you put big white dots in it. Grr. I'm just trying to look for this. Oh well. I don't. Th I, I think he has um, a little bit more bulk here because this is this this cut right here is absurd on him it's really ridiculous um this is a little bit more bulk i it, this is not correct i'm trying to show you the areas that i think you want to look at um because by kicking these two points up a little it keeps him from looking super flat there because he was this bulbous um I think his forearms have a little bit more weight in the meat. There's a little bit more puff in that separation. And this comes back down to sort of what we were talking about with the fabric or in, with the last gentleman is that instead of these being cut in, you got to think these are over pumped, very stressed muscles that are round and they come in and those intersections are made not by being cut in, but by, by being bulked out, if that makes any sense at all. Right? You're not getting these separations because of, of things being cut in. It's that these things are bulked out, and that gives you the cleaves. I think, let's see if we can find that front on picture. Stop. I want, there's got to be a straight on. Let's see, his jaw was a little more pronounced from the front. I mean, look at that transition. It just, it's absurd. See, it's not cut in. I mean, look at the distances. right that's not cut in this is just huge so it <laughs> looks like it I mean, his when he was in his heyday his muscle structure was 
It really, it was like no one's. He really did have an amazingly unique body. Come on, where's that picture from the front? I mean, look at how bulk that is. Show me in the preview. Show me the front, 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 front. There we go. I think his face is a little longer. So, if you look at where, oh, it's funny, it won't let me do the see-through with the pen, grr. Nope, that's not what I want to do. We want to do that. Nope, it's not going to allow me to do it. Um, import a picture. Do you see how long? his face is from his lips to his eyes. There's a lot of space there. I think your face is a little short. Um, he just had such a long, from lower lip to chin, his jaw is really distinct. And it's actually quite interesting, unlike a lot of bodybuilders that you see, he was so tall that he actually had a neck. Right? Even his bulk, he had so much distance, he had separation there. So he never really looked like, um, you know, a lot of the modern muscle builders sort of look like orcs, right? That muscle starts up here. But he, he retained a neck throughout his whole thing. And that was something that was really unique in his proportioning. Um, And I think it's simple as, oops, that's the wrong thing. Oh, my brush is too big. <laughs> oh, got to turn that infinite depth off or that don't work, does it? Turn off back face masking. <laughs> you can see by changing the angle of that neck just a touch, you're making this jawline a little bit more pronounced. And I think that he's just a little bit longer. It's really subtle. I think. Be careful about making this stuff pillowy. It's definition, it's not puff. Maybe that's something that was here. Um, so look at this jaw angle. Make sure it stays square. His neck like I said, there's distance in his neck, so his neck doesn't, um, you don't really get this sort of fantasy shape. 
it's one of the things that was like i said very unique about his torso is that he had enough length that he still retained a lot of his like human proportions right he didn't like the whole neck thing didn't come up to the back of his head his head was always up out and off of his torso um because what that separation did is it gave him his head length right um He just looks a little round up here. He looks pretty good from here. Yeah. So I think those are the big things. Let's. Um, but see how much link there is there. And because of this angle, right, he has these big jowls, but look at how straight that neck is from under his jaw. You know, it's super straight, comparatively speaking, right? You actually see this outside edge of his jawline. And the other thing is that his cheeks are really pretty high up there and compared to you know, his jaw, he has a really long face. Once again, he's just, he's long, he's a big boy. You yeah. know. Did you check it against, uh, like his proportions against a profile? It looks great. I would just worry about those transitions not being scoops, but being puffs. Don't cut the lines in. Allow the muscle forms to short to form the cleaves. Uh, fill that out a touch. Don't let that be a scoop. Look at the length of his face and how his neck interacts with his jaw because this was really puffy, right? It really stood out. He had a very distinct jawline. So his sternocleidomastoids never got so bulky that it ate his jaw. He always had a clean jawline. And that's something that a lot of the big builders lose. So, yep. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Are there any questions? Uh, Ian said I didn't check his head against the body. Yeah, I think that... Um, I think you'll find that his head proportions are a little odd. Or... Um, where is the, this one? I can't remember what his head lengths were, but it's pretty far up here. Where is it? Yeah, he's. Oh, let's do see through and let's actually use the ruler thing. Mm -hmm. But measure his head length. He has a kind of a long torso. He was a tall guy. These are just absurd, but let me look at that. Like, it's ridiculous. That's been stretched a little, but he's a monster. <laughs> I would try to find this set of pictures right here. They're out there, but I think this is one of the best sets for, um, um, you see, the thing about this set of pictures is he's chin high, so it actually makes his face shorter, if that makes sense. So be careful about using this 
as the front view unless you know that you're foreshortening, foreshortening the face because he's chin high. Because we had a bunch of these photos and um, for their training stuff and we got him in a bunch of different, you know, stages and different poses and the ones he, he liked to stand with his chin high because um, it really accents his jawline at that point from below. But, um, yeah, no. That's probably going to be your best picture to judge your proportions from. It's hard to tell his buttocks from there. <coughs> Ready for the next one? Yep, who is it? Uh, we are on these, or those, but... Uh, you currently have two OBJ files, and I'm going to request that you go to Dropbox, download some ZTLs. I refuse. Too bad. <laughs> Did we already do Ian Arnold? Oh, you just removed That's it. Just you sneaky better. Download. <clears throat> Who are we doing first? <clears throat> it's um, these two. two. Yeah. Okay. I know it's a bust, but be careful about um, how you chop the arms off. It feels like they're sloping back a touch. I mean, I guess it's tricky. It's a weird place to cut the arm. I feel it's a little... Maybe the bicep starts a little high. I think that's it. Because you you got to remember that your bicep goes under the pec. And you're, you're kind of, because you have it separated out. But if you look at, you know, if that's a clavicle, your pecs, your delt the bicep would be coming in and under. So the bicep sort of facing the wrong direction. But the face is lovely. Especially painted, it looks good. I would say... Two, double on. Yeah. Here is where I would definitely say... Did you thicken it? Interesting. Make this thicker. If you extruded it out, and it appears you did, make that thicker. Just so it has some presence. Mm. What was that? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's turn the paint back on real quick. Um, I would still say that you want to put just a touch more definition in your edging. Oops, clay tubes. Just so there's some separation in the I heard Discord. I'm like, am I still online? Was someone telling me that I'm offline? Um, right don't don't let these intersections get sloppy um, just keep that clean if that makes sense so like mark them like mark them better yeah just so because right I mean the top line of the let's take this one for example right like this line is um nice right you know it really and especially in the reflection it has that sort of pinch smile it looks good but in here and i mean uh you know you obviously weren't coming in and like finishing it to that level right you know you're not cleaning up the lips per se and stuff but just as a habit keep your edges clean and stuff and so where it's going back and in you still have you know a little bit more definition there just so it doesn't get lump because see here you know your lip lines are nice but um you know make sure that see how that provides like a hump or a lump right there and that lip doesn't have that hump. so right just so you don't have like that weird intersection right there right this is one is going over the other at this point so that is do you see the difference there? Yeah. So just make sure that you don't get sloppy in these intersections. And it wasn't, you just didn't go that far. So it's not a problem. But, you know, that's, and it's sort of the same thing here. You know, make sure that you just have a little bit of transition there. And, you know, because you have the brow weight or the lid weight here. Right, just don't, you know, these are crisp intersections. Make sure that you're following that through, if that makes sense. I would say, you know, I puff that out a little too much, but even if you're just coming through the side, in a that was too big. I know I've changed the shape of that too much. So instead of smoothing that into something that disappears, cut it into a sharp edge first. And if you don't want the sharp edge look, right, you can come back and polish it, but you can see that has a crispness that this side doesn't. And so, and I know that's melodramatic, but, um, you know, even just coming in and cutting that in, and all I, I'm just using SK trim polish, right? I'm just flattening that edge. So it's ending up there. 
and you can see that gives a little bit more crispness to that and it's a nicer transition right. other than just sharpening some of that stuff up I think you're pretty good because this is a very stylized character so you know it's not but just where some of these are just crisp some of the stuff up so it looks intentional you know just make some decisions about that stuff the hair's great you did a really good job just be careful like on this make sure that if it is going in front that it is actually in front and so instead of allowing these surfaces to sink in, oops, let's grab this guy. Make sure that these are right, that's actually going over that. Um, and where these intersect, you know, make sure that there is, don't allow them to cross over and under one another because it's not what hair would do and it's something that your subconscious recognizes very fast it's like oh what's going on right there right okay. just so either under or on top exactly kind of like don't let them see like right here right you know one of these oops one should be going under one should be coming over so it's a clear transition, right? Because see how you lose the shape of your hair bunch right here because that's cutting in. So you can just see that's telling that over and under story from there. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, like there you lose a little. Just make sure that the forms make sense as they're traveling. These look fine. That probably could come out of touch, come in a touch, right? You're, it's still a tapered edge. You're not getting that weird bite in. So just be a little careful about that. But the hair looks great. Um, yeah, fix your biceps, right? Because your biceps don't intersect up here. They come into the torso. So that angle is a little squirrely and yeah I think those are the only things it looks good yep. he's good and now the tank guy is that in the same one here or the, this is the other one right yeah the other one is fine Um, and I can see that you know you've been it's still really soft and I know that in some of these it is cut as a spiral you know what I mean where because I don't know if you saw the last crit where I was talking about don't cut stuff in um, yep. and I know that you're just laying out your profiles and stuff but I would say the same thing instead of thinking of this in using a cutting tool use clay to find the edges and allow those to kind of dictate the edges and that's going to give you a, a step ahead to create you know the layers and have them interact a little differently um, because you can see here you know this is just a V cut I'm assuming there's some depth difference in this you know yeah. so in, instead of instead of cutting lines in use the edge of clay tools clay tubes and allow it to define your forms and that allows some of this stuff to be a little less puffy and a little bit crisper and that crispness is what's going to allow you to have um, a solid reflection story um, okay but 
I, I do have a question here. Of course. So, uh, it, it looks like this because I mostly use the pinch brush mm -hmm. to make it like it, to have the those uh, sharp edges. Mm -hmm. But if I use the the clay brush, it won't have clay those, like grease edges. So well, you can't. You can. Or? Well, okay. So. Once again, not clay, clay tubes, because clay tubes has a square alpha and it allows you to get sharp edges. And then, hold on, let me show you here. SK Trim Polish knocks the puff away. It's sort of a flattened tool. And then, if you want very sharp edges, I use pinch all the time to crisp up my edges. But because these are not drawn on, they're actually layers, it allows me to come in and do a lot less pinching to get the effect I want, right? Because I can come in, I can... And the other thing is I'm not pressing this down and just crisping it hard. I'm coming in and kind of doing it just slowly. And I also tend to, if you'll notice, the center of my pinch is actually more towards the inside. And it allows me to guide where that pinch is going. Um, and so you can see that I came back through and I got a sharp crisp edge in here. Let's just do it to this side as well. You know, I can get that same sharp edge, but I have the step layers so it reads, you know, I'm getting dimensionality out, dimensionality out of it because as I'm conceiving my block up, I'm doing it dimensionally instead of cutting in. And like I said, I know that like a lot of this, the spiral stuff is cut in in some of these characters. So, you know, I know that like a lot of time this is actually the feeling um, but I would still come in after this, right? And no, with with this one right here, mm -hmm. I just thought it was the best idea. Like I, I had to make it feel like it was wood. Yeah, no, like. no, that's what I'm saying. I think like this is a very common, you know, like Princess Mononoke and some of that stuff that wood spirit thing. This is a very common surfacing on them. I'm just saying oh. that. Um, when you're doing it, when you start conceiving it, still conceiving of in layers can help you. Um, but in this case, that's why I was saying at the beginning, this is actually a texture that is specific to this style. So um, I wouldn't, like I wouldn't sh push this too much in that sense, but there are still things that are in front of other things, right? It's not just all one surface. So you can play with just coming in and getting the edge, right, just up and off. And you get a little bit more visual separation as that goes. And it also allows you to build a layer hierarchy of something being on top of something else. And I'm not saying that's what's happening right here, but like, you know, we're not changing the look of this, but that allows that to be on top. That comes behind it, that comes on top. So instead of, you can still have that V shape, but with layers, you're determining um, like a hierarchy, right? You know, this arm is in front of that, that can be that, but where they intersect, instead of it being a V, it's okay. flat okay, layers no. right and then that way you have a very subtle but very powerful guide of what's in front of one another as opposed to it all just being enters and bees right so think about that dimensional hierarchy because it's something that a lot of people don't do and it separates your work because you really can see that oh that arm is in front of it like you know like this intersection right here you know it's like okay well you know does this come here and we're not changing the shape, but that's behind that, right? You know, it just allows you to get a surface hierarchy. But he looks great. I mean, both of them are very nice. The forms are nice. I mean, yeah, no, they look good. Thank you. 
I really appreciate it coming yeah, from you. Of course. No, it's good work. Any question? This is illegal. Um, no. Uh, I got the the layer things that you were talking about. Okay. Cool. Cool. I'll, I'll start doing it. Awesome. It looks great. All right. So this is the last one. Is that what I'm seeing? It was the last one. <laughs> You're implying <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I am. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. Good armpits. Here again, been a regular thing with the last few things. Um, depth hierarchy. So instead of cutting these, when you're conceiving this stuff, lay down layers. You know, that's on top of that. That doesn't have that V. That's going under that. That's on top of that. And it'll allow, see like this ridge right here, instead of this being a ridge, you know, that is a muscle plane. And then that's a muscle plane that sits on top of that. And that's one that sits on top of that. Get a layer hierarchy. Um, mm -hmm. And I know this is stylized. You know, I'm not. Uh, yes, it's stylized. <laughs> and the thing is, is, you know, once you, but I think it's important to conceive these things in these layers, and then you can come back and knock that edge off. And you know, who cares? Because look, no matter how soft I get that, that's still a layer that's on top of that one, right? Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Um, so just when you're starting to conceive your forms, think of them in layers first. And I think it'll prevent just, you know, like this ridge here was very bright and it looked very cut in like a V. And so I think it'll help with some of that stuff. Um, your armpits are actually great. Um, um, uh, I think uh, I have a little problem with triceps. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, deformed, I think. Uh, it's small. Uh, I don't know. I uh, just study uh, <laughs> ZBrush and sculpting uh, not a while uh, from March. Sure. Um, the only thing where I think if there's a issue with the tricep is that, um, it, so you got to think about the, even in something that's stylized, you have to think about your insertions and origins, right? So this muscle is actually coming up and oops, come on, give me my little drawing thing, right? It's coming up and attaching, right? And how this is bulking it's almost bulking like a calf where this is the end of the muscle uh -huh. and that's not the end of the muscle right so what in pardon me i'm about to mangle your model i'm not saying this is right i'm just giving you <laughs> um is instead of that being right that's coming up in here and connecting all the way up in here right so think about what that muscle's doing and that muscle is coming out and it's actually bulking in the opposite direction it's actually bulking in this direction right you get this scoop is here not the other direction this actually planes out and comes up under the delt. Mm. And so the profile of that muscle is almost the opposite of what you had it, where you're not getting that scoop here. This is 
the back plane. And like I said, don't, I'm, this is, I'm not saying this is how it should be <laughs> sculpted. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to think about the plane, right? Um, so that muscle's doing that. And when it flexes, you're getting sort of the scoop here. So that round shape is back down in here, not up here at this intersection. And so if we have that coming up, inserting under the delt, and then that now comes over it. Looks more correct. Right. And so the issue is, or was that, oh, I only meant to do one side so we could look at the differences, but right you can see that now that has yeah, that yes i see it yeah so that was the problem with that um uh, this is a little bulky but once again that style it doesn't you know it's not uh, uh lower part is not uh, developed uh, yeah I, I, I think that you can work on just these two shapes a touch more so they're a little yes yes you know so it ties into because that is the wrist from there so these you know where's the position i think this is rolled over just a little too far if the hands flat mm, maybe not my my banging muscle definition allows me to see right uh, <laughs> Um, and I think that just pulling this down in a little more, because with that bolt, you know, once again, where are these things inserting and origins are, where are the insertions and origins, you know, gives you that a little bit more where that bicep is actually coming in and attaching, you know. That's your bone. That sucker is coming all the way down here, right? Oh, yes, yes. So, um, just that implication of that penetration helps some. Don't don't change the shape by cutting it in. Think of those planes and what's cutting on top of it. And if you have to come back in here and you know dig it flat and see where it goes, I think that'll help. Um, mm -hmm. that's good. I would say that, um, yeah, no, I mean, like your wrinkles and stuff aren't good. I think that this is a little square and a little far away from his body. Are your arms a separate uh, subject? Yes, I, I see. Uh, as I, uh, you full model, no. Yeah. on uh, full height uh, I see it's uh, um, no proportions is uh, not good well it's not I'm bad it's just good English it's just a little oh you know you're good it, it's just a little flat I mean it's um, you know this is a very flat edge there and I think that just simply if you knock some of that off it leads back to where the body is um, and i have uh, a little struggling with uh, pants and folds actually you know your, your in, folds, in, in the past <laughs> yeah no your folds are actually not bad at all um you know if we knock that back that then becomes a more logical place for that fold to happen right because it's not just big and square that can come you know that's usually your fly even if you don't have one you know you got to figure that that's flatter up here you then get a bulge that's cutting back and in and usually you get another sort of fold angle here because that usually is coming sort of in and you get that right is the belt separate 
Yes, uh, all is uh, separate uh, samples. Oh. There it is. Okay, hold on. Let's hide that and hide that. And let's go to our pants. Right. So, I would say when you're doing your pants, unless there's a reason... I'm just going to do this real quick so we have... Um, and my model is really, no, a little noisier, I think. Here, we're just going to do that a little. So the waist goes... In, I know I distorted your model for a second, but uh, I wanted to no, go... It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so I think that when you're doing pants and you have you know, the stylized form, It'll help you if you get your belt out of the way and you get the pant to be at the body because that's going to tell you where a lot of the stuff is. And I know you're not, you know, trying to sculpt actual anatomy, so it's not a big deal, but yes, it's... I was trying to build something, something orcish, trollish. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah, so... You know, and the nice thing about doing this to the torso or to the body is, you know, like I said, that this scoops out, right? And that becomes uh, the quad. And so if you have this stuff close to the body. Uh, no, it's uh, free. It's, uh, close knots. Right, but... It, it, I know it's not tight, but if you... Yes, it's not that. Right, but if you start sort of where the body's at, right, um, then that's telling you where these scoops and stuff are, and that's going to help you with the folds, if that makes any sense. And yes, now, it's me. <laughs> you know, and now when you get that, it's simple enough to come back in and fill in the dents, so that way it's baggier. But it's actually, you know, even a baggy pant in this case is going to touch the body in places. So where is it touching? And if you know where the body is, then that'll give you an easier way of finding that. And then when you turn the belt back on, you know, now it's not, you didn't base the pants on the belt. Now you can base the belt on the pants, if that makes sense. Um, and, you know, these things can come out and be baggier but at least now you know where the body is and you're working around that i guess um like i said crotch wrinkles are good you may want to and you know once again it's stylized so um you know there would be wrinkles here but it's stylized so that's totally just a decision uh the boots um even in the stylization here let's divide this so i have a little bit more you know these are uh, i am not finished it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yet <laughs> um you know, that is sitting in front of that. So just make sure that that tongue is back behind the boot. You know what I mean? Instead of yeah, it yeah. being a V. Uh, and that can do whatever it's doing. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, you know, you're... He's an orc, so he doesn't have a neck. You know, <laughs> Um, uh, it's uh, no. well. It's I supposed mean, to be uh, a, a remeshed, uh, 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 texturing and animated, mm. but I am not. Uh, the deadline it's short. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I would say. These are kind of going, because this is your sternocleidomastoid. It actually attaches up here. And so these going straight up, that's why this is looking a little funny, because here, is this head a separate subtool? No, 
No, no, no. Here, let me mask this off real quick. Mm-mm. 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 Really? Flip. There we go. <laughs> uh, part. So if you look here, see how these are kind of going straight up? Um, that would... Where's planar? Planar. Just as simple as not back face masking. Just changing that angle so it's not returning out to the chin. And that these, you know, that's connecting there. it's kind of doing that so just make sure that this transition here is tensioning from back up in here not up under the chin if that makes any sense and it'll give you um it, it won't be so perplexing as to what's going on there, I guess is what I'm saying. Those go out and around. They don't return. Right? They're not coming in like this. They're going out and around the Adam's apple. You have to fiddle with that a little. But. Facial anatomy, it's uh, a little rude, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops. Give just some of that a little bit more faceting, right? And like I said, you can come back in and smooth this stuff out, but if you're conceiving with the layers intact, they don't just get round, right? And they mm -hmm. reflect light better with a little crispness. Um, and, you know, whatever you're doing there. Yeah, I think that um, it really, the only real issue issues I'm seeing is, you know, um, just remembering where your insertions and origins are. What's happening? The bicep is actually coming through. It's not cutting back. The tricep is actually coming up and under not cutting back um and just a little bit more thinking of that i think you're gonna be pretty tight you know the boots and stuff look nice i just think you can work with the pants a little um you know so they weren't just tubes and they weren't so far away from the body um yeah i think that you know defining this those muscles are going around that bone so you know that that bone is where these are connecting and same here right that's that wrist bone so define the bone and that's going to tell you what happens to the muscles if that makes sense um yeah no other than that, it's looking good.
Yeah. Have any questions? No, thank you very much. Yeah, of course, it looks great. All right. Do I have more to download, or did I just download them? Two more to download. So who's first? The last one you put in, the woman. Okay. No, the anatomy's tight. She looks good. I think... It's always an optical illusion from certain angles where these muscles go in. In this curve there, sometimes it looks like this is curving this way. Um, but that seems to be fairly straight. It's just that angle. Because from there it looks fine. Your armpits are closed, so that's not an issue. It, they said, I had problems with the arm and the elbow area. Was looking for help on that and the knee area. Yeah, the... Yeah, see, from this side, you are a little off there. So, one thing, bicep, you, when you cut here, when you took this and cut there, so where that is the bicep see how your bicep is sort of coming up here and this side's coming up here so it's actually trying to insert up here you got to remember that that cuts up under this stuff so your armpit is really sort of a three layer thing you have your bicep coming in and under You have the pec coming up and over. And yet again, I'm not saying this is the sculpting. I'm trying to just get you to see the layering, right? And then the delt comes over the two of them. So the armpit's always this three-layered 
affair going on there. And when you take a line and you cut it here, you really start to lose that, especially her because she's spread out a little. I mean, like if your arms are tied up, yes, of course, this becomes a wrinkle. But she's spread open enough to where you can see her armpit. So when you came in and you did that, you separated the bicep from the torso. So that's your first issue with the armpit. Now, the... Lengthwise... Your upper arm may be a little long. But it, I don't think it's the upper arm's long. What I think is... Your bicep comes in. I think you're missing this muscle set here. And that's what's making this weird. Is that you have this dent in here and this muscle actually comes up and over. And... And yet again, I'm just simplifying these forms. You have some very subtle anatomy stuff going on here. I'm not being subtle. <laughs> you have that coming in. And then your biceps coming over it. So I think what's making it look odd is you've sort of missed this muscle set here. And then... your biceps going in and and I know that you know, she may not be this bulky I'm just trying to find our muscle groups and see what's happening yeah so here oh you know what I don't have on this computer anatomy for sculptors um, I would do an anatomy check because as you're rolling this around she's there and she's rolling that this flattens out and I think this kind of does that and goes over. That comes up and under. That's in. Um, I suggest Anatomy for Sculptors. It's a really good book because it gives you these plane breakdowns easier. I don't have it on me. I have to install it here. But I think that'll help. So, yeah, you're... Your elbow is kind of coming in because she has that out. Right, that's coming up and under the delt. So I think that was the issue, or the biggest issue is you were missing this muscle set here and that was making the dip on the arm a little too low that's tied to the dome so let's see if we can find it
that's how do I click on something and it just totally isn't what I clicked on? Don't blame you. Cool. You can blame me. are facing in, yeah. Mm. It's frustrating. I want the picture. This is the image that you want, right? So, it's going to be a... So you can see what I mean by it flattens out there. So your biceps coming in, and this is a little bit more from the side. So in all reality, this is the view you're looking at. Um, but you can see that comes in and it sort of flattens out there. And then these are coming in. But you see the elbows rolling out a little bit more. And in the book they actually have the proper pose, I think. Come on. So we're looking for this image from the other side. <laughs> but do you see what I mean? How this edge here, this is what you were missing, that lump right there. And this flattens out. And the bicep sneaks inside there. So, stop it. Right. That transition set is what you're missing. Let me come back here and you can see that it's. Come on. We can do it. Right. This is sort of there, but it's low. It's not coming up. You're not getting the cross over there. So you need this set. This set. And that. See how long that is? So this probably wants to usually come up a touch. And you're kind of missing these guys. So it's not just this one. Go Whoa, that's the wrong brush. It's not just these going this way. You also have some coming in this way. And that fills up that scoop some. Right? Boom. 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 And your bicep is coming in here. And that is crossing over there. So, reevaluate the anatomy. And that... I've changed the angle of that obviously by fiddle futzing with it. But this intersection is where you were missing it. This comes down and in. 
these are kind of going there, that comes there, that comes out and in, and up and over. So I'd say, just look at the anatomy of that elbow. You're not too far off. Because by missing some of these, you're missing the sort of lump where it's all happening. aren't bad and you gotta up the side and then you get your little lumpy guy in there and then it's a little one mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, they're okay I think that you just need a little bit of this guy in here because you were just getting a little soft. Your knee wasn't actually getting its like little double head. Right here. The only problem, the knee is sort of doing that and you just have one there so find that second lump those are rolling out a little it's actually coming back up in the air probably a little more but I think this intersection is where you're missing because that's coming back and in this is coming over that's going out so you just have one lump you just need to make it slightly longer and I think you'll be happier I think those are the issues. Armpit, elbow, you just were too low. You're missing the crossover. And so I would f suggest looking at an anatomy book and seeing where these insertions and origins are. And that's going to help you clean up your elbow. And honestly, I think the knee was just... Um, you know, just getting your muscles in the right place, and that's going to open this up a little more for the kneecap. Other than that, it's looking good. Any questions? Haven't seen any. Right on, right on. Last one. This is which one? Did I already load it? Uh, yes. It should be just to the left of this tool in your tray. Ah, there it is. <laughs> is it. Is it not Seymour? What's oh, the. We did. He just asked a question. Uh, could you have a look at the serratus muscle, too, from the previous sculpt? No, oh, goodness gracious. What You're pulling anatomy on me. Alright, let's... Man, it's 1.30. <laughs> um, upper side of the ribs. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm like, I know where that is. What is it? Well, what I think, see, I, you know, honestly, you know, she, 
she's not ripping with definition, but you do have muscle weight there, right? Um, this is where I always start with basic shapes. Like you can see that I'm making these planes. What's going where? What's cutting under? Um, but you lose so much of this association by losing your bicep coming in. Why is that all So you lose the positioning of where all this is. So if you get your bicep right, and then your pec right, then you know that this is going to sit coming right out of the armpit at an angle here, if that makes any sense, and then that's behind it. So, but you lose association where this is if your armpit's incorrect. So. I think that, I mean, I think there's plenty of meat there for it. I think it's in the right place, right? I mean, you have this lump here. Um, but I think that it loses its shape because the bicep isn't crossing over the torso, right? Because if you're looking at it, I know that I've made it bigger, but let's go back a little. Right, you know, this has the right, sh the right shape, and it's in the right place. You know, it's just that it loses its relative place by this intersection not happening. So I would say that, yeah, it's fine. I think you need to sort out this intersection and then you're going to see that this looks much, it looks fine. You know, it, it's not necessarily bad. It's this intersection needs to happen. Armpits are hard. They're messed up a lot. Did that answer that question? You have no idea how to make the definition of, at the... Yeah, yeah. So really the definition is just, um, especially in, you know, a figure like this where you're not really having, you know, ripped muscle core. You just have to kind of wrap your head around what's happening, right? So I'm going to remove it for a second. And let's get in here, right? You have your lat. And it comes up in behind. Your bicep comes in. your pec comes over. Your delt comes over. And then this starts up here and fills in here. And so the definition is literally just the lump there because you're not putting these in as such, right? You know, you're not um, getting the fingers going in off the ribs. So, you know, you just have this nice little lump there and that is telling that story. Now, of course, this is blown up so you can see what's happening I wish um, there's 
there's a very, very, very good app. And I, it's like Atlas of Human Anatomy. Hold on. Visible Body. No, no, I got it. But it does a really good job of... Um, where are you? I don't know if you can see this, but what it does is it gives you these really great little anatomy models and it shows you where all the muscles are uh, inserting and it actually shows you like how the muscles work, their little animations. But, you know, these are really good because you know, it tells you where they are, but it shows you how they overlap and function. And what's cool about this one is that you can make, um, like you can um, make muscles disappear and make them show. So here, let's look at this armpit. I don't know if you can see this, but right, you can see that these are going up under the armpit see the bicep actually comes up out here and then you're straight to fill in there all right you know that really shows you how deep the bicep is if you really if you want to do this this is, I, I don't think it's that expensive. I've had it for years. Um, but it's really, really good because it shows you the animation. See, here's an animation. Let's see. It shows you what muscles are making the contractions and stuff. But it gives you a really clear order of um, how they work. And I think there's a desktop app that I've been trying to figure out so I can show you guys. Um, Henry, will you remind me to look at that? Is there not? I think there's a, a desktop app. Um, oh, yeah. um, I'll try to get that sorted out. I mean, I have it. I thought I had it on my machine before. But it's a really good system because it really shows... It's not big bulky stuff it kind of gives you you know the muscles are a little anemic in some ways so there's space between them and you can hit one muscle and hide it so you can see what's directly below it and i find that app is really good at seeing how the layers work together so yeah you know this is really a hole right your rib cage is right here this is coming in that's coming in that's coming in and the delt is coming in and then your rib cage is right here and then these just come between the ribs and come out and they sort of insert there so i mean your little lump was fine i think that the problem was this here because the second you just cut a line right there, it separated all this, and you lost your anatomy's cohesion. Ja? Oh yeah. Ja? Oh, so now we go back to Seymour. Are there any more questions? I'm not trying to blow you off. <laughs> No more. Okay. And the next one is Ian. It's Seymour. Isn't that the name of the flower from... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, uh, what was it called? You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm. That, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know the movie well. I've seen it many times. <laughs> Here I go again. <laughs> Little shop of horrors. Thank you. That's what. It's almost two in the morning. That's like too much work. <laughs> I know this one is like kind of simple, but I wanted to use it for portfolio, so I just want to make it look as good as I can. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So you have the teeth going in, that's good. You know, this intersection here is nice. Um, if you're going to have this um, kind of ridgy gums, right? Don't be afraid to carry them over the tooth thing. You know, they don't just stop right there, if that makes any sense. Uh, let's a little division there. Uh, come on, you. So, I would make sure that. Um, so this is going over the teeth, right? But make sure that when you come back and in, that the teeth are coming over the gum, because there's a distinct transition there with teeth and gums, right? Because that's cutting back and in then. You see that transition form, if that makes sense, here. Right, that's coming behind the tooth. This is on top of the tooth. So that the contra, the counteracting um, over under here is a big deal in making teeth look good. And then I would define that form so you're getting that transition. Oh, symmetry's on. No wonder weird things are happening over here. Um, get your sort of gum feeling right. Make sure the high spots are here, the low spots are here. That's going to accent the gum. And then, since you have this sort of ridge thing going, that would probably clay fill, fill this back and up a bit. And then probably start to come over that. And don't be afraid to carry that ridge, you know, into your gums. Don't just stop, because that's a texture you have going. So don't stop that. But the most important thing is make sure your gums are behind your lip. SK twist. You create that bright lip. <coughs> and I would have done this before I textured it, but that's okay. We can do it now. SK Clay Fill Alt. So I'm knocking that little ridge off. How did I just lose all of my things over there? Oh. Preferences, config, restore custom UI. There we go. I don't know how all that disappeared, but whatever. Coming back, alt fill. So I'm knocking that down. Clay fill, I'm gonna fill that edge. And so here, you can see that my lip is on top of my gums. And just make sure this transition is the stuff is under that gum. So I'd come back in here and sort of give myself a lip.
And then, oops, that's a little strong. I would keep that sort of duckbill lip thing going instead of making it a half round. Um, get a little bit of that shape in there. because that is a form that our brains are used to looking at as lips as opposed to tubes and you can see that gives you a slightly more cohesive thing obviously I'm not worried about the smoothness right now but just make sure that that gum is behind the lips does that make sense? yep totally and and a small change that makes a big change. Yeah, because you know, once again, those soft V's just don't cut it. You you need those layers to be concise. But other than that, it's fun. I mean, it makes sense. The leaves look good. The position's fun. Has some activity to it. Yep, I would just make sure that my gums are going behind my lip, and see how it puffs out here. I'd be careful with that. I would try to keep everything, I'm not saying you can't make it puffy, right? I'm just saying make sure that if you do, that the puff is behind the lip. Yep. Makes Thank sense. Thank you so much, Tommy. Yeah, of course. All right. I think it's that time. Is it two? It's real darn close. It's real darn close. Real darn close. And that was the last model? Yep, look at that. Woo, perfect timing. And we didn't Thank crash you. another three times. Thank goodness. And well, now my hour room is super cold. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was sweating. I was like, oh my God. I thought the air conditioner was going to be noisy. So I was like, no. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> All right, kind and gentle folk. I appreciate you hanging out. Um, join me next week. Sign up for the ZBrush Summit Sculpt Off. If you're on YouTube, hit like and subscribe. It's really important. It helps our algorithms, keeps us up here and going. Um, look up ZBrush Jewelry Workshop. Join our Discord. Um, if you join the email list on ZBrush Jewelry Workshop, we'll send you brushes and UIs and things like that. Uh, Anything else I'm forgetting? Um, join Discord if you're watching on YouTube. Like and subscribe. If you have any questions after the stream is up, put them down in the comments below. Oh, that's right. If anyone has any questions, put it in the comments below, and either I or someone from ZBrush will get back to you. They're pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I, I think that's it. Upload your models for next week. They will be done in order. And, um, yeah, hopefully we won't have the catastrophic bizarritude of crash of blah, blah, blah that we had this week. And, uh, Ja, I will oh. see you next week. Have a lovely week. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Bye. <laughs> I dragged you into admin only. Ha <laughs> ha. I didn't know I could do that. Okay. That was that, right? Alright. So tomorrow 
I am going to continue to try to sort out assets and shit. Um, so something interesting. Bro, hey, you're still streaming, bro. <laughs> am I? Yeah. I hit stop streaming. Oh, well. <laughs> Have a great week. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny.